show Health and Wellness Myths vs Facts. I'm Gargi Rao. This show is focused on understanding hormonal health. Endocrine glands produce and secrete hormones that are responsible for many important body functions. They play a vital role in the functioning of the body and determine if one develops diabetes, thyroid disease, or growth disorders, and a host of other hormone-related disorders. How often does one consider or even track the health of one's adrenal glands when one is considering their health status? The sad fact is that adrenal health is largely overlooked. Uh, the role of the adrenal glands in the body is to release certain hormones directly into the bloodstream. Now, these hormones then determine how the body responds to stress and some are vital for existence. Adrenal health needs to be given importance to ensure overall health as it would help in avoiding uh, various health complications and associated uh, dysfunctions. We have an expert panel with us uh, which will provide medically accurate and actionable advice to help prevent the development of adrenal disorders. We're joined by Professor and Dr. Uh, Jaya Bhanu uh, Kanwar, Professor of Endocrinology, a Department of Endocrinology and Metabolism, IMS and SUM Hospital, Bhubaneswar. Uh, Dr. Esharta, Consultant Endocrinologist, Samatvam Indra Nagar Manipal Hospital in uh, Bengaluru. And Dr. Vikram Singh Chauhan, Consultant Endocrinologist at Dr. Chauhan's Clinic and Jabalpur Hospital and Research Centre, Jabalpur. Thank you so much. Doctors, for joining us and you're shedding a light and awareness on this issue of hormonal health. Uh, Professor Kanwar, I'd like to start with you. And what happens when the adrenal glands don't function normally? What are some of the more common problems that are related to the adrenal glands? Uh, Gargi, as you mentioned, the adrenal gland is an endocrine gland. It secretes various hormones. And adrenal cortex secretes three important hormones. It is steroid hormones, which we say is a stress uh, hormone and also it secretes mineral corticoid hormone and some sex, sex steroid hormone like adrenal androgen. If there is steroid hormone deficiency, the patient presents with uh, weakness, uh, fatigue, uh, there can be nausea, vomiting, sometimes can be have abdominal pain, they have loss of appetite, uh, there is lot, lots of weight loss, and there is hyperpigmentation of the body. Uh, there is generalized hyperpigmentation of the whole skin of the body becomes darker, there can be localized hyperpigmentation like in the buccal mucosa, in the gum region. There can be hyperpigmentation in the nail base, uh, in the elbow or knuckle region. There can be hyperpigmentation in the areola region. So the, these are the very common uh, symptoms of adrenal insufficiency. They can have also low blood pressure. Blood sugar may also go down, which we say with hypoglycemia. Sometimes we find the sodium levels are also low. But so, and this, when there is mineral corticoid uh, hormone deficiency, uh, there is uh, volume contraction leading to dehydration. They can have salt craving. Occasionally, also adrenal androgen can be also deficient. This is particularly marked in female patients with their present with loss of pubic and axillary hair. So these are common manifestations how if the adrenal gland fun doesn't function properly. All right, uh, Dr. Sharda, what exactly is the Cushing uh, syndrome or Cushing syndrome? If you could explain that to us. Yeah, Cushing syndrome is due to excess production of cortisol hormone from the adrenal gland. Till now we discussed the deficiency. Now we are discussing the cortisol excess. Now, why cortisol is very essential for normal functioning of the body. But the excess of this cortisol hormone from the adrenal gland can lead to multiple medical problems in the person like weight gain, especially around the abdomen called central obesity. It can cause muscle weakness. It can cause high blood pressure and also cause weak bones, osteoporosis and very thin skin. And this is generally due to overproduction of cortisol hormone itself due to a tumor of the adrenal gland or it may be due to excess production of the cortisol stimulating hormone like ACTH from a small organ gland at the base of our brain called pituitary or from other organs of the body the ACTH can come. This stimulates the excess cortisol production from the adrenal gland. All right. And now, Dr. Chauhan, uh, taking that forward, how widespread is Cushing syndrome among Indians and its uh, prevalence similar in men and women? So, uh, uh, when we talk about uh, Cushing syndrome, uh, endogenous Cushing syndrome is the type where 
the syndrome has occurred as a result of uh, cortisol excess produced within the body and this is a rare serious disorder uh, and it occurs at about uh, a rate of 2 uh, to 3 individuals per million population per year and uh, as far as gender discrepancy is concerned it occurs around uh, it, uh, it occurs 3 to 4 times more commonly in women than in men now this is to be distinguished from exogenous cushing syndrome uh, which is the more common uh, variant uh, which is caused by an excess uh, which is caused by glucocorticoid uh, glucocorticoid drugs taken by the patient either for a legitimate medical reason or taken illicitly as is often the case now prevalence uh, patterns for this are difficult to estimate because there are too many variables involved and this uh, issue will usually get resolved um when once the offending uh, drug is uh, discontinued all right uh, dr kanwar what are the symptoms that can help alert a person uh, that he or she has this uh, syndrome cushing syndrome yeah uh, dr sarda has already alluded it uh, but uh, i would say uh, if somebody is gaining weight uh, and becoming obese there is a typical kind of obesity in cushing syndrome this is called central obesity there is stress deposition over face strong can abdominal region and uh, relatively sparing the extremities and if the fat gets deposited on face we say it mooning of face if sometimes fat gets deposited on the upper part of the neck then we say it's a buffalo hump type of fat deposition and uh, the typical features of cushing syndromes are like stria these are the straight marks which normally see in pregnancy or somebody is gaining weight but the cushing syndrome stage mark or or stria are different from those uh, seen in the pregnancy these are uh, cushing syndrome uh, these are stage marks are red and purple color these are wider uh, the thickness is more than about 1 to 2 cm they have some petechial patches on the skin like the petechial patches been uh, red blood patches patches over the skin uh, they can have multiple uh, skin infections fungal skin infection and uh, they can have bone pain and proximal muscle weakness that means the patient is not able to get up from the sitting position they find it very difficult to get up from the sitting position and in female particularly they have increased acne or increased facial hair growth they can have menstrual dysfunction like oligoamenorrhea or amenorrhea so they can have multiple metabolic disorders like diabetes hypertension uh, as well as renal stone so if somebody is having specifically central obesity proximal muscle weakness petechial patches the typical stria of cushing syndrome then we should evaluate that patient for the cushing syndrome all right dr uh, sharda how is a cushing syndrome then diagnosed and uh, which are the kind of tests used to diagnose cushing syndrome once cushing syndrome is suspected it is quite easily diagnosed with uh, tests conducted on the blood saliva or the urine a careful history and a detailed examination is done by the doctor to see whether the patient has cushing syndrome then we can do a blood test at 8 o'clock in the morning called serum cortisol after giving a particular tablet the previous night at around 11 pm we can also do a test in the saliva which is called late night salivary test between 11 pm and 12 midnight and we can also perform a 24 hour urine selection in which the urinary free cortisol is tested now once the presence of excess cortisol is established through one of or multiple tests which we have done above then we need to do further test to figure out the cause of this excess cortisol in the body and these include further blood tests like plasma acth levels etc and imaging tests like ct scan of the adrenal gland to look for the adrenal tumor and mri of the pituitary gland to look for the pituitary tumor etc all right dr chohan is cushing syndrome uh, if you could tell us is it a serious medical condition and uh, can it be completely cured or uh, is it something that one has to manage lifelong with medications so um cushing syndrome is certainly a serious medical condition it gives rise to diabetes uh, mellitus it gives rise to hypertension 
uh, tends to weaken the bone, as previously mentioned by my co-panelists. It, it causes a condition known as osteoporosis. Tends to cause a flare-up of serious infections in the body. Uh, tends to push the body towards cardiovascular uh, disease and will lead to a, an early mortality if not taken care of uh, properly. So yes, it is a serious condition and it, uh, it should be managed uh, when, when diagnosed uh, appropriately. The ideal treatment for Cushing syndrome would be a surgical removal, uh, would be first to isolate the cause of the, of the syndrome uh, properly and then remove the cause surgically. So that would be the ideal treatment for Cushing syndrome. Unfortunately, that is not always possible. Uh, in which case we might need to resort to uh, medical management, which is always, almost always, a temporary stopgap solution. It can be used to, uh, it can be used preoperatively. Um, it can be uh, used when uh, the the condition is causing too many serious symptoms, and you know we have not been able to isolate the the the, the actual cause. And so that the medical management will be temporary, and this is because medical management is not. Um, very effective and it is also associated with a number of adverse effects. Rarely you might need to use uh, radiotherapy also, for example, in a, in a tumor which has been uh, excised but there is some remnant remaining and therefore that might need to be managed with uh, radiation as well. But the ideal treatment for Cushing syndrome would, uh, would be surgical. All right, and uh, Professor uh, Kanra, we, this, we just discussed, you know, the medical uh, treatment for Cushing syndrome. But what are some of the other issues that could cause problems in the future uh, with Cushing syndrome? Uh, if uh, uh, Cushing syndrome is not treated properly, mm -hmm. if the cortisol doesn't become normal uh, in the future, it can develop into cardiovascular uh, disease like myocardial infarction or stroke. Uh, thromboembolism, particularly uh, as my co-panelists uh, say that they are associated with hypertension and diabetes. In those patients, there is increased risk of this cardiovascular disease and there can, there can be increased risk of osteoporosis leading to fracture, vertebral fracture, refracture. Uh, they are more susceptible for infection. Even if the hypercortisolism is higher, there can be uh, a rupture of the bowel. So these this, this are very fertile conditions. If, if you do not treat properly, uh, in time, they, they, they can lead to uh, deaths in about 5 to 10 years of time. All right. So that's a lot of questions around this Cushing syndrome. We'll slip into a short break and return with more. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Health and Wellness, Myths versus Facts, and we are focusing on understanding hormonal health and how it affects our overall health. And we have a panel of doctors answering all our questions. Uh, Dr. Sharda, we were talking about Cushing syndrome, and let's discuss that further. Can Cushing syndrome affect future pregnancies? Now, the thing about pregnancy is it is difficult for women with Cushing syndrome to become pregnant because we have uh, discussed the symptoms earlier. It can cause irregular menstrual cycles or absent periods or, and also cause hirsutism, which is excess facial hair, acne, all hormonal imbalances. And hence, the women may be actually seeking fertility treatment for pregnancy. And sometimes the doctor can actually pick up and screen for Cushing syndrome in such patients with excess facial hair rounding of the face and central obesity along with the uh, irregular periods or difficulty in conceiving. Having said that, the Cushing syndrome is rare during pregnancy and when it occurs, it is usually due to an adrenal tumor producing excess cortisol. Now, excess cortisol by itself does not cross the placenta and harm the baby directly. But excess cortisol does lead to placental dysfunction and hence the baby or the fetus may be small and also there can be a premature birth and miscarriage. And there are some maternal health issues due to excess cortisol, especially during pregnancy because even in non-pregnant people, Cushing syndrome can lead to high blood pressure and high sugar levels 
and the same happens during pregnancy also due to excess cortisol so the high blood sugar and high blood pressure again can cause deleterious effects on the pregnancy in the form of uh, premature birth small baby and also lot of miscarriages but if the diagnosis of cushing syndrome is established during pregnancy or a patient with cushing syndrome does get pregnant this can be safely treated in the hands of the expert with a surgery by removing the tumor and not affecting the pregnancy in the care of the expert in the field All right now Dr Chauhan why do patients with uh, this uh, Cushing syndrome then gain weight and is it possible for them to lose this newly gained weight So uh, weight gain is a feature of Cushing syndrome and it occurs because of the ex- the effect of excess cortisol at the level of the brain uh, which stimulates the feeding center so the patient has a greater appetite tends to eat more there is also associated um, fluid retention with the syndrome and that tends to cause weight gain also then uh, there is the the problem of the body uh, forming excess of adipocytes or the fat cells so that process of adipogenesis fat cell formation is increased and that tends to cause weight gain and finally uh, patients with cushings uh, tend to exercise less and this is as a result of uh, the muscle weakness which is characteristic of the syndrome and also coexisting depression which is often present so these are the reasons why uh, weight gain uh, occurs in cushing syndrome there is also a possibility of weight loss occurring in cushing syndrome uh, which is less common and weight loss uh, with uh, coexisting cushing may occur if the cause of the cushing syndrome happens to be a cancer for example Uh, uh, an adrenal cancer or a, or a small cell lung cancer and that uh, cancerous process will lead to weight loss additionally they might be uh, uncontrolled diabetes mellitus or an uncontrolled serious infection such as tuberculosis and that might cause uh, weight loss as well all right uh, professor kanwar is uh, cushing's disease worse at night uh to so know that uh, we need to understand the uh, diagonal secretion of the cortisol hormone uh, the cortisol hormone levels are higher in the early morning and by evening and uh, night uh, the cortisol hormone goes down however this 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 occurs in a normal person but in cushing syndrome uh, this diagonal uh, secretion pattern is lost so at night the cortisol hormone levels are higher in cushing syndrome patients however if you look at the clinical manifestation it uh, doesn't differ from day to night time it overall remains same right uh, dr sharda uh, can you reverse cushing syndrome yes if the source of excess cortisol in the body can be completely successfully removed then the cushing syndrome can be reversed like for example there is an adrenal adenoma secreting the excess cortisol or a, there is a pituitary tumor which is secreting excess cortisol stimulating hormone if these are successfully completely removed and the source of excess cortisol is eliminated it can be reversed sometimes the cortisol stimulating hormone is in other organs of the body and that also if it can be successfully removed then we can reverse the cushing syndrome but sometimes as was earlier mentioned the patients do need additional treatment with the radiotherapy and medical therapy once it is completely eliminated the source of excess cortisol the symptoms of cushing completely come down by about 12 months even the weak bones will come down become stronger in about a few years but the high sugar diabetes and the high blood pressure sometimes do not completely reverse although the cushing syndrome is completely treated hence they may require further regular medication all right uh, dr uh, chohan now uh, we talk, let's talk about treatments again and what surgical treatment is indicated for adrenal gland in the endogenous uh, cushing syndrome right so 
if the cause of the Cushing syndrome uh, is an adrenal adenoma, a tumor of the adrenal gland which is which is responsible for the syndrome, then the treatment would be uh, a removal of the affected adrenal gland, preferably by a uh, by a lip by a laparoscopic approach, and uh, in select cases by an open approach, and that would be uh, curative for the individual. Uh, there might also be a requirement of removing both adrenal glands. This is less commonly done. So a bilateral adrenalectomy, as it is known, and this might be required in the uh, in the in the event that uh, the patient continues to have severe manifestations of the syndrome, and the the source of the tumor has not uh, been properly identified, or if the patient continues to have uh, severe uh, symptoms in spite of a prior uh, surgical procedure, uh, and uh, this is also required in the twin uh, very rare conditions of both the adrenal glands producing excess cortisol uh, in an autonomous manner so that is when uh, this uh, less commonly used approach of removing both the adrenal glands would be required and following the uh, the bilateral adrenalectomy the patient would be uh, required to be on a lifetime uh, replacement of uh, uh, hormone secreted by the adrenal gland all right well thank you so much doctors for joining us and you know shedding light on these issues that can take place because of uh, our hormonal imbalance or hormonal issues uh, thank you all for watching at home goodbye